Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed lead acid accumulators and we realized that lead acid accumulators, they use lead metal as the electrodes and they also use sulfuric 6 acid as an electrolyte in their working where the reaction takes place and then they provide electrical energy. In this lesson, we are going to discuss a different type of a secondary cell that is alkaline accumulators. And in alkaline accumulators, we are going to use an alkaline solution or a basic solution as an electrolyte in our accumulators. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain what an alkaline accumulator is, then state the advantages of an alkaline accumulator over the lead acid accumulator that we discussed in the previous lesson, then state the disadvantages of an alkaline accumulators over lead acid accumulators, and then finally explain the uses of accumulators. So just like lead acid accumulators, Alkaline accumulators also have electrodes, like in this case we have nickel hydroxide as our anode or the positive electrode, and then we have ion metal as our cathode or the negative electrode. Remember, in lead acid accumulator we were using lead metal as our cathode and lead 4 oxide as our anode. But in this case, we are substituting lead 4 oxide with nickel hydroxide and iron we are and lead we are substituting it with iron metal. So in lead acid accumulator also, we were using an acid as our electrolyte. In this case, we are substituting that with a basic solution, which we call potassium hydroxide. Remember in potassium hydroxide, we have two major ions, that is potassium ions which are positively charged and hydroxyl ions which are negatively charged. So these uh, ions are the ones which are responsible in a reaction which will take place inside these alkaline accumulators to generate electric current. So here the electrolyte which we are going to use is a strong alkaline solution. Alkaline solution remember from your chemistry is a base and such as potassium hydroxide and we can also use sodium hydroxide solution since it is soluble and then the common type of this alkaline accumulators is nickel candium uh, accumulator and nickel ion accumulators so we have some of the advantages and disadvantages of alkaline accumulators over the lead acid accumulators as the two main and major examples of secondary cells. We are going to begin with the advantages of alkaline accumulator over lead acid accumulator. And the first one is that large current can be drawn from them over a very short time. And this is contrary to what we discussed in lead acid accumulator where we said in lead acid accumulator, lead acid accumulators, in lead acid accumulators, a large amount of current should not be drawn. Large amount of current should not, should not be drawn out of them within a short time. So here you should not draw large amount of current within a short time, that is for lead acid accumulators. But for alkaline accumulators, you can draw, you can draw large amount of current within a very short time and, and the accumulator will function normally. The second advantage of lead of alkaline accumulator over the lead acid accumulator is that they require little attention. To maintain they require a little attention to maintain this is contrary to lead acid accumulator where we saw we have seven precautions which we must take care of in order 
for a lead acid accumulator to function or to last longer. But here, you only need little attention for these uh, alkaline accumulators to function. Then the third uh, advantage is that they are lighter and portable. They are portable. It means you can carry them ar ar around, you can carry them around easily since they are not heavy and bulky. So it means lead acid accumulators are very bulky. Lead acid accumulators are bulky. Bulky means they are not easily portable. You cannot carry them around. Then the fourth advantage of alkaline accumulator over the lead acid accumulator is that they can be kept in a discharged state. They can be kept in a discharged state or condition for a very long time before the cells are ruined. This is opposite to what we discussed in lead acid accumulator, where we said if you leave them in a discharged state for a very long time, a process called salvation will take place. And salvation is where the, the lead salvate, lead, lead to salvate, which is a solid, uh, will harden and then the plates will be destroyed. That is for lead acid accumulator. But in this, in, in alkaline accumulators, there is no such a thing, and you can keep them in a discharged state for a very long time, and then when you charge, when you recharge them again, they will function normally. So we also have disadvantages of alkaline accumulators over the lead acid accumulator. And here we have only two disadvantages. The first one is that they are very expensive. These accumulators, which we call alkaline accumulators, are very expensive. Therefore, it means lead acid accumulator, which is its counterpart, is relatively cheap. Then we have another disadvantage of alkaline accumulator, and it is that they have a lower EMF per cell. Remember, in a lead acid accumulator, in lead acid accumulator, in lead acid accumulator, we said one cell, one cell has an EMF or, or produces an EMF of 2.0 voltage. Therefore, if you have six cells, then they are going to produce 12 voltage. Then for alkaline accumulators, the, the cell, the, the EMF per cell ranges between 1.5 volts to 1.6 volts. Therefore, it means if you have six cells, then you will have something less than uh, like less than 12. So in this case, they have a lower EMF per cell. So the potential which they are going to produce or the electromotive force will be relatively lower than that one of a lead acid accumulators. But generally, alkaline accumulators are more efficient than the lead acid accumulator. So we have the uses of alkaline accumulators, and these uses are based on the advantage that we said large amount of current can be drawn out of them within a very short time. Now, since you can draw large amount of current within a short time, therefore they are used in ships. Remember, you cannot connect electric cables to the ships. Since you cannot connect cables to the ships, therefore ships are equipped with many alkaline accumulators which when they are connected in series they will produce a large amount of current and large emf which will supply the electrical energy within the ship then they are used also in hospitals and in buildings where large current might be needed for emergency remember sometimes there is electric or electricity blackout when there's a blackout and a, an organization or a hospital where you cannot stop some processes like surgery, then you will equip those hospitals with alkaline accumulators. This one will serve as a backup in case of electricity uh, blackout. Then now we have the differences between primary cells. Remember primary cells, the one that we discussed, like simple cell, electronic cell, and then the dry cell and the secondary cell, the one that we have discussed as alkaline accumulators and lead acid accumulators. So we are going to look at the differences between the two, primary and secondary cells. And the first um, 
difference between a primary cell and the secondary cell is that primary cells cannot be recharged after use. So since you, once you use a primary cell, you cannot recharge them. But for secondary cells, they can, can be recharged after use. So once they are depleted, you can recharge them and reuse them again. Then the second difference between primary cell and secondary cells is that primary cells, a small current can be drawn from them. You can only draw a very small amount of current out of a primary cell. But for secondary cell, large current can be drawn out of them, either within a short time or within a long time, just like we have seen in alkaline accumulators, where we have said a very large amount of current can be drawn out of them within a very short time. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss capacity of accumulators.